So thanks for making time to come and chat, and uh, just it's been good to get to know you. Hey. You're here like two years now? Actually, in four days, it's two years. Wow. Yep. And why Hunter Mall? How'd that happen? It's a good question. I, I mean, never really had it on our radar to come up to the Caribou. It just sort of unfolded. We were living in Hope for five years. We we're completely immersed in our businesses and uh, Cindy more than myself just had this sort of the strong urge. I mean we definitely prayed about coming up here but I wasn't getting any clear green lights like oh yeah this is the thing to do. And you, you owned a moving company right and, and that you were busy. I was busy busy. Uh, Cindy owned a retail store so we're, well. we were both really why are we coming up there when we've got so much going on down, down south. I think uh, you know we just sort of took a good look at uh, where we were going with our lives and said, you know, we got to dial down a little bit and uh, we wanted to do some horses. And so we did, we got some horses and brought them up on moving day and got a big dog, never wanted a dog, now I've got a big dog. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, behind all the layers, I think obviously, you know, we, we pray about all things that we do. So, I, you know, I'm sure that we're in the right place. Well, yeah, and, and we're so glad because <laughs> you really just sort of fit right in with the Band of Brothers and we do a lot of moving stuff and it was like, hey, now we got a bit of an expert and that's yeah. awesome and yeah. uh, people getting to know you. It does take a while. How did you, how did you even sort of get into Christianity? I mean, the year that, the year that Cindy and I married was the year I came to Christ. You know, I mean, I was... Uh, I think I was 18 when I when I met Sydney, but prior to that, I had lost a very very close friend. He drowned uh, up uh, up in Kamloops in a lake, and that really really shook me up. See, I grew up in a home where we you know we had no uh, value system as far as Christianity, no no upbringing, no Sunday school, no nothing. And but I was just broken when my dear friend Rod died. We were both the same age, so. Wow. Um, and I cried, and I cried, and I, you know, I come from a German background, not a lot of emotions, everything is sort of like, okay, pick up the pieces and get on. But that one really crushed me, and I recall crying out to God when, when this situation happened with Rob, and I said, you know, if you're out there, I'm, I'm hurting. Just, like, I, I just couldn't stop this grieving process. And I kind of left it at that, and within short order, um, you know, I was working up in Vanderhoof, up in the mills up there. You know, back in the late 70s, I was making like $14 an hour, which Ooh. I thought I was a millionaire. <laughs> uh, you know, I was really far removed from my family, and I wanted to come home and see my family. So I did, I did eventually come home at some point, and uh, when I went, went to visit my parents, there's this girl living in our house. Because my parents turned our very large home into a kind of like a, a rental boarding house, and there was this really cute girl in there. I said, "Mom, who is that girl?" "Oh, that's just this new girl that moved in. Her name is Cindy." And I go, "Oh, yeah, okay." So, you know, I knew her actually, sort of, from high school. She was a grade ahead of me, and uh, she started sharing about some very significant things that happened in her life that led her to God, mm -hmm. to Jesus. And I'm like, "Okay, I'm totally foreign to this," but I was fascinated by her story. And so that was probably the drawing thing in. It was funny because she said to me when, uh, you know, as time passed, and I think, you know, by the time we were married, she says, you know, the day that I saw you, God told me that's going to be your husband. Wow. And, and, and for you to have called out to God yeah. back there. Yes. And then he weaves it together. Totally. What a beautiful story. That's, That's amazing. Uh, God was in the background of that, and I had no you, idea. You didn't know? No, nope, I was just going on my merry way and went back up to Vanderhoof, but all of a sudden these these things started threading together. I was starting to get these the sense of there's got to be more. Obviously, that's a, that's a long journey. Yes. And he continually does stuff in our lives. What what was one of the more major things that, he, that God worked in you for that kind of that healing process. Ooh. Hmm. Well, I mean, I got over that death, obviously. Yeah. 
I mean, that's, these are things that happen in life and tragedies happen and, you know, I passed through that and as I be, you know, became more, you know, knowledgeable, became more disciple and I understood that you, know, you just got to give these things to God, death happens. It did sort of rock my world though in that, you know, life is short. It, these things can come at any moment mm. and it sort of was, I don't know, maybe like an alarm bell, like, hey, get your life in order. Yeah. You know, I didn't feel it as a threat on my life, but I really sense like something is really tugging at me. And I don't know, it wasn't Cindy's words. It was just the sense of tugging. And it was the Holy Spirit just calling me and, and leading. Like, hey, mm -hmm. there is a way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so yeah, just going through the years and you, you I know you did uh, some ministry with churches or went around the world with mercy ships. And mm -hmm. man, we could talk a lot about that ministry and stories and what's in your heart no yep. i see that you you're such a helper you love people you, you got an evangelist heart you want you're the fisher of man now um i guess like you know you mentioned about your background and stuff and uh you, you talked to the band of brothers the other night about your father can you just tell us a little bit about that uh how you kind of mm -hmm. sure yeah out? i mean we all have our personal stories about our parents and the baggage that comes with that and you know statements that we make you know when we get married yeah oh, we're going to be different we're not going to do things like they were and you know i my mom and dad are a wonderful couple gisela and conrad god bless them they were they did what they did the best they could but they were they were very authoritarianism it was she had four we had four boys in the house so things <laughs> You know, you got to march to her. Kind of have to, yeah. Especially my mom. She was a very powerful and aggressive woman. And they weren't Christians, right? No, no, they weren't. You know, and when I became a believer, they were like, you know, okay, yikes, good for you. You needed that crutch in your life, but you know, don't be, don't be bringing this up in our house. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, I was by then I was pretty well eighteen. So, with growing up in that sort of a home, we were always sort of on an edge, and we had to toe the line and get things done. We lived on a farm. There was all kinds of stuff to get done and uh, there was no time for, you know, leisure and being on sports teams and hanging out with our buddies on after school and playing video games. Get to work. Um, so, I mean, I brought that sort of a mindset into my own marriage. You know, I, I, I kind of made that commitment when I was a very young married guy that I was not going to be like my dad or my mother, we're gonna dial it back, you know, we're, we're new believers, there's a better way. And yet I really, uh, I really found it hard to shake off all that stuff I'd learned and brought on to myself, that were my parents put on to me. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a bit of a stressful uh, time without the right, really the tools and, and the knowledge of how to be a better man. A, a better godly man. So to become this new creation, become this new person and, and do things differently just did not come easily. And uh, I mean, my, my daughters would attribute to that. I mean, they're not saying I was horrible, but I knew that, uh, you know, without God, uh, it's, it's going to be a rough road. So mm -hmm. I'm still under construction, still working it out. And I, you know, I just thank God for his grace that, uh, mm -hmm. um, I'm not worried about it. I used to be a thing in my life where it was a constant striving. God, I've got to be, I've got to do better. I've just got to stop. I've got to break these habits. You know, dominance, control. Um, yeah, it was horrible. And year by year, God is just chipping away at it and working at it. It's, uh, it's becoming easier and easier. And I'm, I'm super grateful. I'm quite enjoying it and you know since I've now sort of dialed down from my work life and, and I'm sort of doing a little bit more of a, you know, looking in the mirror and saying you know where am I, where am I at it's uh, God just saying hey come to me we're gonna work we're gonna keep working on stuff and yeah I'm just loving his presence more and more now uh, it used to be I didn't have didn't have time or didn't make the time although I did I mean I kept discipling myself through all the years but where well, he kept discipling me but now I'm really finding okay I'm getting into some of the core stuff and getting to know them more. It's a joy. It is a joy. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You know, the prophet Zephaniah, it's, uh, you know, he's, 
He was working on those Israelites there, a tough bunch. But uh, Zephaniah 317 <laughs> says, For the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior, right? He takes great delight in you. Now, that is a hard one to wrap your head around. Seriously? You take great delight in me? And then he goes on to say more. He says, His love calms all of your fears. He rejoices over you with joyful songs. Like, seriously. Wow. What dad would do that? I don't know if a dad in my in my growing up that ever hovered over me with those kind of words. I'm like, that's my dad now. I, I love my dad. Okay, he's, he's now passed away. Got to lead him to the Lord too before he died. That was pretty cool. But that scripture just is near and dear to me that he, he actually rejoices over us with singing. He's got time and he wants us to know that uh, we're a pretty special package in his sight. I'm super, super grateful.